uh, were inconsistent in their teachings uh, when compared with the teachings of Jesus Christ. And yet not one of them truly believed in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Well, so the basic problem with a cult is one of deception. All right, then let's, uh, let's take them one at a time. Dr. Robert Morey, uh, the Mormons today are talking a lot uh, on television and they are saying that uh, they have the Bible, but uh, Jesus not only gave revelation in the Bible, uh, what we don't know and we need to know is that there's the Book of Mormon and he also gave revelation in that. And they want us to believe that they are Christians, but they've just got a little extra information. What do you think about that? Well, I think it's important that Christians realize there's really only one issue that needs to be discussed with Mormons. Now, granted, there's over a dozen Mormon denominations, and there's reorganized and disorganized and all sorts of things. <laughs> Usually, you will meet with the Donnie Marie Osmond, the Utah type who comes knocking, the one at the Polynesian Center in Hawaii. Now, these particular Mormons are the ones who are the fastest growing, and as you deal with these missionaries, and I have to deal with bishops and whatnot, I said, we're not going to discuss building temples, baptism for the... There's only one issue that really matters. Who was Joe? Now, Joseph Smith was either whom he claimed to be, God's Latter-day Prophet, and we all then should become his disciples, but it's not decided which Mormon denomination we should join because they all claim to be the church of Joseph Smith. So that still doesn't get us in the Utah church, but it was Joe whom he claimed to be, God's Latter-day Prophet, or was he a nutcase and they should have put him in a padded room and give him baskets to weave and pat him on the head now and then and say, good boy or he was a liar, a con man who was in it for what most cults want, money and women. So he was either whom he claimed to be, or he was a nut, or he was a liar. How can you find out? Mormon missionaries are trained to give two answers. One is arguing in a circle, which is like rowing with one oar. Now, what do you, where do you go when you row with one oar? You just go around and around and around. You don't get anywhere. Joseph Smith, I had a, uh, this is part of it, it's the book, How to Answer to, uh, a Mormon, but here I'm in a, a convention, and Mormons are jumping up, and uh, he said, I bear my uh, testimony that Joseph Smith is the prophet of God. I said, how do you know that? Because God spoke to him. How do you know that? Because he was God's prophet. How do you know that? because God spoke to him. How do you know that? Because he, and everyone began to laugh and he woke up, I said, you're rowing with one oar. I could say my dog Fifi is the prophet of God. How do you know that? God spoke to him. Well, how do you know that? My dog's a prophet of God. Arguing in a circle proves nothing except that you can go in circles. Secondly, they argue from subjective feelings. I have this burning feeling and witness in my heart. And I usually say, well, I bear you my testimony. I have a burning witness. Joseph Smith was a fraud, and the Book of Mormon is a farce. And, and they, uh, 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 I said, forget all of that. Every religion says, I know, I know. Deuteronomy 18 says, yes. how do you know if someone who claims to be a prophet gives a prediction and it doesn't come to pass, just one false prophet, prophecy, and he has struck out. I found 64 false prophecies of Joseph Smith. I listed eight among men on the moon, uh, the lost 10 tribes living in a tropical valley in the North Pole where the Apostle John is still alive and if he's collecting Social Security, he's just about getting his money back. <laughs> the temple that was never built. In other words, you have predictions and prophecies in black and white, and I usually hold up the book. I said, it's not, you don't need to be a Christian, a Jew. This is black and white. Here's the book that is from the uh, Journal of Discourses. This is what Joe said in Doctrines. He was a false prophet, and in the name of the Lord, you tell the Mormon, Joseph was not whom he claimed to be. He was probably not a nutcase. He was a liar, for Scripture says, whoever denies Jesus is a liar and an antichrist. And that is who Joe really was. And that's why the Book of, the Mo uh, Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Tri and Doctrines of Covenant, and the whole thing is false. Okay. Bill and Joan Sentner, you were Jehovah's Witnesses for, what, 20 years? 
and you actually worked in the Watchtower headquarters in Brooklyn, New York. You actually answered questions for the Watchtower all across the country. And uh, they claim that they are the only organization on earth that actually speaks for God. They are his prophetic organization mm -hmm. to communicate divine truths and all the rest of us ought to listen to them. Have they, as the mouthpiece for God, ever given false prophecy? Just as Bill said, Deuteronomy 18 says, if a prophet's going to speak in the name of the Lord, what he says must come true. Have they said something in their own literature, their Awake magazine, the Watchtower, whatever, that shows that their leaders are false prophets? Yes. <clears throat> their first president wrote a book in 1889 and he entitled it just what the Bible said he would. The time is at hand. And the Bible tells me that if he says the time's at hand, do not follow them. And in that book, he wrote these famous words. The battle of the great day of God Almighty, which will end in A.D. 1914, with complete overthrow of Earth's present rulership, is already commenced. That ended his rule. He died a year later. But 1914 was the end of a period of time. And it started in 1889, and 1914 was the end. And then 1918, 19, uh, 1919, they predicted the end of the world. And since that didn't happen, most people left the organization. They backdated it to 1914 as the beginning. The end became the beginning. And now the end is, is uh, today or maybe tomorrow or... 1975. Or 1975. And they predicted the end of the world. Joni, how many times have they actually predicted it in their writings? The At least the... eight times. Eight uh, 1874, 1914, 1918, 1925 was a big disappointment for them. Uh, <laughs> 1932 they updated it to. 1941, we were at a convention in St. Louis, Missouri. I didn't know you then. No, we didn't know each other then. <laughs> Uh, but we were both there, and all the children were on the floor of the arena, and we were all handed a book called Children. It was the very first book I'd ever read and studied of the Watchtower, and it said in there that these two people, Lois and uh, John, were not to get married. They were in their teens because in, within six months, Armageddon would be here. And that's, that was the atmosphere that I grew up in. I never expected to get through high school. I never expected I would ever get married. I never expected to be a grandmother. But here we are. We're still here. And we've, they've already gone through another false prophecy of 1975. And don't let them tell you that they never said anything about 1975 because they didn't write it on ice. They wrote it on paper. And it's there. We can read it and we can show it to you and we have it documented. So there is no doubt using the same criteria that Brother Morey was using, that they claim to be a prophet of God. And don't let them tell you they didn't do that. They didn't write that on ice either. And Deuteronomy says if they say a word in my name, and they do use the name of God, a false translation, but still Yahweh, and if it does not come to pass or come true, you need not be afraid of him. So there's no doubt that the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses is a false prophet. Right. Bob? You can apply the same method to Herbert Armstrong, That's who right. talked about 1975, to Reverend Moon, who said the world would recognize him as the Lord of the Second Advent in 1982. I didn't, did you? <laughs> or all those other cultic groups who get excited and predict the end of the world, Joseph Smith did it, mm -hmm. 1892, and it didn't happen. And what you have to realize as we get closer to the, to the date, the year 2000, we're not going to see fewer cults. We're going to see more of them. And even pseudo-Christian cults setting dates in the name of Christ when he specifically denied and forbade such things. Yeah. Dave, uh, today we've got, especially on the West Coast and uh, in other of our big cities, Transcendental Meditation has uh, come in a new light. Uh